You're listening to the Super League Pod. It's part one of two of our end of season special, and it's the Sloppy Awards. Okay, hello everyone. Hello Mark, how are you? Good, yeah, how are you? I'm very excited. Yeah. Very excited for the Sloppy Awards. Who'd have thought, all those years ago, two, three... Two and a bit. Two and a bit, two and a bit, that we'd be getting to the third Sloppy Awards. This I is didn't insane. See it. Not after one of our best ever listened to shows after the Grand Final as well. Fabulous, yeah. isn't it? I told you not calling the Grand Final special would pay off in the long, <laughs> in the long run. People love cheerleaders. Yeah, these are going to be called just... Awards and season review. <laughs> well, yeah, but then people know what they're getting. What we're not doing is driving the Wigan fans away at this point, or the non Wigan fans think, oh, yeah. maybe, maybe we're in with a shout. So, for the uninitiated, for people who are listening for the first time, every year the Super League Pod holds the annual Sloppy Awards, which are the Super League Pod Awards. So, over the next however many minutes or hours potentially, we're going to be going through several categories of listener voted for. Awards, things like Player of the Year, Young Player of the Year, and so on. Yeah, and then there's, also. There's uh, nine listener voted awards, and there's fantastic. The, the, the Dream Team, which is also yeah. listener voted, which is a new edition this year. And then we've got uh, the Host Chosen Awards, where we sort of give a thank the people who've been involved in the show yeah. all, all year long. We bestow credit and titles upon people, and there's yeah. even, without giving away too much, a couple of new categories this year Ooh, as well. Tough. So, who knows yeah. what could be going on? So. The Listener Awards, Mark. Talk people through a little bit how this has worked and how we've come to the results that we've got before we get started. So we've had the voting form up through um, our trial and trusted Google Forms uh, for, what, about three three weeks or so now? Three or four weeks? Mm -hmm. And people have been voting during that time. We actually had record number of of votes, um, twice as many as the first sloppies wow. uh, and, and an increase also on last year's that's fantastic so, so that's positive so thanks to everyone who voted the um, people don't have to vote in every award so some of the awards have had more votes than others we put up a short list this year yeah. which um, helped people along a little bit and then people could also throw in their other suggestions so we will cover those off there's a few um, bracketed ones that yes. are thrown down that are people that you know people voted for that you couldn't actually give the award to, so those ones are um, not. Yeah. Uh, 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 we'll mention them just, yeah. just for comedic value or what <laughs> have you, but they, they didn't get counted in the overall percentage percentages of of the votes. So yeah. that person's vote was just wasted, essentially. Oh, it's never wasted if it's in the name of comedy, though. Some of them just were wasted, ignorance or not fact, fact checking how well, thank, Jamie well, Shaw is. But thanks for listening, ever growing population of Super League Pod listeners. <laughs> yeah. Ignorant maybe isn't the word Mark wanted there. Okay, well let's start then. Are we going to start at the top and work our way down? There's no. Um... Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, well the first award for this year's Sloppy Awards is the prestigious SLP player of the year now previous winners in 2014 the inaugural sloppy uh, the inaugural player of the year was chris hill and then he was followed last year by adam cuthbertson on the back of that phenomenal first season he had in the uk Indeed. so two prop forwards have been super league player of the year what happened in 2016 mark well we will we'll, we'll go through them in reverse order mm-hmm. so in fourth place yep was John Bateman. He attracted 13% of the vote. Right. Joint second place went to Chris Hill and Denny Solomona, each with 20% of the vote. Right. Which means that another award is going the way of Danny Houghton. He won the award with 36% of the overall vote. Right. So this year's Super League Player of the Year, Mr. Danny Houghton. Yeah. He's yeah, mate. The SLP award as well, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, another reason why he needs to be getting on the blow at Wayne Bennett, perhaps, and or yeah, mobilising the whole FC fans. Well, got another award in the cabinet. I'm pretty sure they all feel mobilised, whether or not um, I, I agree with their opinions. But um, certainly everyone on the list was deserving in, in terms of the, the, the final four. And Danny Houghton, you can't challenge that he's had a great season. Mm-hmm. And we've talked before about some of his attacking numbers being better than... 
previous campaigns, yeah. so that's probably what's raised his level. Absolutely. There it's... were there were other votes. Yes. For um, so the the minor votes were gathered by Daryl Clark, mm-hmm. Gareth Ellis, James Seguiaro got a vote from a Leeds fan, Junior Moores, <laughs> Kyle Amor, Luke Gale, Sam Powell, Scott Taylor, and Tony Gigo. And there was also one for your favourite player, Iranu Vavu. Iranu Vavu got a vote, did he? He did. That's fantastic. Well, I noticed that today when I was making my notes, and I can give you an update on Iranu Vavu. He's now 29, and he plays for St Helens, the uh, the, the fullback, Iranu Vavu. However, he's only just joined St Helens, having previously won two grand finals with the Sydney Roosters. So that's that's his career arc at the minute. So he's he's gone to play in Super League for the twilight of his career. Well, there you go. So there you go. So he's ended his time down on a high, though. He has. Well, I mean, his last grand final was about three seasons ago. Oh, so he's he's not struggled, but he's played in faded, yeah, fading te- struggling teams, difficult teams. Um, but he's yeah, yeah, he's got payday up at St Helens now. So. Well, from a fading star <laughs> to uh, an entirely fictional one to future stars, um, award number two is the SLP Young Player of the Year. Tom, the players must have been aged twenty-one or under on the third of February this year, which was the day before the season kicked off. Previous yeah. winners in twenty fourteen with Daryl Clark and twenty fifteen was. George Williams. Mm. Um, so what, how did the voting go this year? Okay, well, in fourth place, with 5% of the vote, we had Castleford's Mike McMeekin, which was a good, a good shout. I think he's had a very good a very good season. Third place, with 12% of the vote, went to Ryan Sutton. Uh, second place, with 15% of the vote, went to the young Wakefield winner, winger, Tom Johnston. Uh, but with a massive 58% of everybody's votes, uh, this year's Super League Pod Young Player of the Year, by a landslide, is the second row from Warrington, Ben Curry. Wouldn't have been a bad shout for player of the year in some in some circles, but, but I offered I offered him as a suggestion you for did. that, but Chris Hill probably Stands a little bit above him there. And he does qualify as a young player by our parameters, doesn't he? Well, I, I think by so. By all measurable parameters. I, must have che- I hope I fact-checked myself. God, what? To think what if it turns out that we were wrong? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, Warrington fans, that's another prize, I suppose. Hopefully that makes you all feel a little bit better. Your thoughts on this one, though, because obviously it was a, a hefty win. Nearly 60% of the vote going to one player is a large percentage, isn't it? I yeah, and I agree wholeheartedly. Though he got my vote. How about you? Uh, no, Ryan Sutton got my vote. There you go. There you are. Okay. Um, we other? did have some other interesting nominations. Uh, Declan Patton from the Warrington Wolves, Fuad Yaha of the Catalan Dragons, uh, young George Williams for a second year was uh, was nominated by some. And he, and he could have found his way on the ballot, to be fair. But yeah, we Greg, went a different way. That's it. Greg Minikin, also of the Castleford Tigers, uh, Jordan Lilly from Leeds Rhinos, and Matt Whitley from. Witness Vikings, which would have been a good shout. And Matt Whitley had multiple mm. people suggesting him. Um, there was almost a fence taken, I think, at some, by some of the Witness fans to some players of theirs being missed, but I think they realised Ben Curry yeah. had a better year. Yeah, if, you can, if you can feasibly argue that Ben Curry is not as good a player as Matt Whitley, I'll, I'll let you have that. But Matt Whitley well, had a great phenomenal season. season and a breakout year for him. And we've got Jamie Shaw in brackets. Why is that, Mark? Because he's 24. He was 24. <laughs> It's not about whether or not they're relatively young. They're all younger than me these days. Yeah. So pay attention, kids. Okay. So congratulations, Ben Curry, Super League Pod Young Player of the Year, which leads us nicely to this year's Best Signing Award. Now, in 2014, that award went to Luke Walsh of St. Helens, and the following year it went to Adam Cuthbertson of the Leeds Rhinos to go alongside his Super League Pod Player of the Year. Mark, talk us through how voting went for this prestigious award. Well, fourth place landed with a player that wasn't on our shortlist, Tom, but but he was backed quite considerably by his um, hometown faith well, his his club's faithful supporters who yeah. have a had a big say in these awards. I think fifteen or so percent of the votes came from Lee's Rhino supporters and James Seguiaro earned five percent of those for the best signing of the season, obviously coming along middle of the year, mm. did a great job for them in their games against championship sides. Yes. Um, <laughs> certainly looked like a star player for them in the middle eights, though. Uh, Scott Taylor, he came in third place with 25% of the votes. Mahe Fenua just edged him, ha- edged him out with 27% of the votes, possibly a split there with Hull FC getting two players on this nominations list. The, the, the winner, it was quite a close margin, though, but it was Kurt Gidley with 31% of the votes. Obviously, he um, was a steady enforcer for... Warrington's up been missed for a couple of years. Well, that's it. He was he was the move to kind of he was the person that came in a year or so later to replace 
Lee Bre- um not Lee Brailey. Yes. yes, Lee Brailey. Lee Brailey. And he said Ryan Brailey and Lee Brailey. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So that's that study. Forgotten already. already. Whoever. Yeah. Long gone, but also forgotten. Uh, Welsh international Lee Brailey. Um, not quite an England player. So yeah, he had a fantastic season, and it was so close yet so far for him. My vote went to Mahe Fenua. Where did your vote go? Scott Taylor. Your so vote. Mm. I think we're amongst those splitting the whole FC vote. But I, you can't argue that Kirk Gidley hasn't had a big impression. And when you actually look at when he, whenever he ended up getting a bloody face in a big game, mm. they lost that said big game. Yeah. So um, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So um, other other people, Tom, um, who earned votes were Jack Hughes, who was on our nominations form, Corey Thompson, who I wanted to be on the nominations form, but I think I was overruled. We negotiated, didn't we? Yeah, Craig... <laughs> overruled. Don't make me sound like I bully you out of anything. Craig Kopchak, Frank Pritchard, Frank Paul Newasala and Glenn Stewart also got votes along the way there yeah. um, from best signing I suppose that, that moves us on to worst signing Tom where previous winners were Roy Asatazi and Chris Sander so a Warrington double in previous years has that form continued is there going to be a Warrington three P on this one well in fourth place with just one percent of the vote we had Ryan Hinchcliffe of the Huddersfield Giants uh, third place with five percent went to Daniel Vito and with a big jump up into second place Willie Mason took 21 percent of the vote but perhaps unsurprisingly despite being Dave Taylor's pick for player of the year in Man of Steel both for Loon was the Super League pod listeners overwhelming pick for worst signing with 65 percent of the vote and it is pretty tough to argue that really isn't it he, he had, was ineffective yes when he was in the side mm. went missing in the middle of the season and then disappeared just before the going got tough in the qualifiers so mm. yeah there you go. Did he get your vote too? Uh, he did get my vote, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, resou- yeah, it was a resounding one from me. Other people that got uh, got mentions and votes included Dominique Peru from St. Helens, uh, Jack Owens, Keith Galloway, Pat Richards, which seems a bit harsh. He didn't have me. a very good year. Mm. Well, he didn't win, so that's okay. Uh, Robert Louis, convicted spousal abuser, Sam Tompkins, and Chris Bridge. We also got uh, one or two votes for Dane Tills. Tell the people why that doesn't count, Mark. He played for Hull KR from the middle of last season, probably from about a third of the way through last season he joined yes. the club, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so there you go. Jack Owens, I think, a bit harsh. Yeah. I mean, he probably played at the level Jack Owens plays at and yeah. played a lot more games than he would have been expected to. Mm. Um, I wasn't sure about Tompkins because it's not his first season at the club, but I suppose he is a re-signing. So yeah. We've thrown that in now, people, re-standings will get continued, but to be perfectly honest... love a chance to bash Sam Tom. Well, they got the chance later on, Tom. They do. Okay, but that, so that leads us on to Underrated Player of the Year. Controversial award this has been in the past, in that we've had people win both underrated and overrated player in the same year. In the first season of the Sloppies, Oliver Holmes of the Castle for Tigers was our underrated player of the year. And overwhelmingly so that absolutely, year. Absolutely. Absolutely had a blinding year in 2014. In 2015, Carl Amblett was our most underrated player of the year, which is perhaps testament to the volume of Leeds Rhinos listeners that we have. Uh, how did voting go in 2016, and who is our most underrated player? Mark? Well, this is always the award that spreads the opinions out the most. This had more others voted for because it's, it's possibly more subjective maybe mm. than any of the other ones um, and the voting was the closest the, lo- the smallest winning percentage on this one but we'll start in fourth place where it was Mikhail Seaman of the Wakefield, Wakefield Trinity Wildcats um, third place was Jason Battieri of the Catalan Dragons in second place came in Sam Powell with 22% of the votes the winner though was Rhys Hambry of the Witness Vikings who achieved 30% of the vote yeah no I think that's a, a, a fair a fair result really Rhys Hambry when he's on the field for Witness is, a, is at the end of a lot of their moves and is, is there backing up and kind of goes unnoticed in a league where there's bigger name fullbacks yeah. applying their trade at bigger teams actually his numbers often stack up to to some of the in brackets Big boys. I think there's players like who play for bigger clubs, like people like Shaw, who I think have had brilliant years, mm. but I certainly don't see them as being outperforming Reese Hanbury this year. Yeah. Um, I, I, for me, he's been the best fullback this year. That's why I couldn't vote for him as underrated, because in my head, I'm operating on a level where surely everyone sees is this good. Ah. Uh-huh. We just don't 
maybe he just doesn't play on TV as much. So who got your, <laughs> who got your vote then? I went.